On the hard scrabble farms of New England, stone walls stand as monuments to the early settlers who struggled to work this land. The stones remind us that carving a farm out of the wilderness was a lifetime's work. Clearing trees, pulling rocks, plowing and planting. It was men, oxen and horses that did this work. And the lucky man had Morgans with him. There are two elements which make the Morgan unique. One is their mind and the other is their physical characteristics. A horse could be worked during the day in the fields, like in a hay field or plowing. And then at night, when the young man wanted to spark his girlfriend, they would hitch the horse up and he'd have a nice flashy driving horse for taking his girl out. In down east Maine, people know a thing or two about working organs. While the breed's strength and endurance were important, it was its uncanny intelligence that made it so sought after as a working animal. Just north of Portland, one woman has spent over 80 years breeding, working, and riding Morgans. The more of the horse's brain that they use, the better. They liked Morgans because uh, they were willing and highly intelligent. Uh, you had a choice between oxen or horses, so the, the tendency was to use the oxen for the, for the boring, heavy, slow draft. And, the Morgans for anything that required tricky work. Pulling out logs was a horse's job because they had to calculate the angles. I noticed uh, with my horses when they're pulling, they'll zigzag to avoid hanging up on anything. I don't know of oxen doing that. By the 1830s, this little blue-collar horse from Vermont was gaining a big reputation. Morgans were in demand and hundreds were bred. They worked beautifully in teams, pulling stagecoaches. They hauled lumber and produce to market. They even pulled streetcars in New York City. Whatever they were asked to do, they were willing and they did it well. After the Revolution, the New Americans were hungry for more territory. And with the purchase of the Louisiana Territories from France in 1803, 828,000 square miles of untamed territory awaited those with the courage and spirit to go out and get it. From New England, New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, they came by the thousands, driven by a thirst for new riches. In the 1840s, gold fever had infected the whole country. It was California or bust. When these hardy pioneers trekked west across the Rockies, they took their valued Morgan horses with them. It was a difficult and perilous journey, one that many never survived. A good example of a Morgan who went west is a stallion called St. Clair. St. Clair was driven across the plains, pulling a wagon ahead of a yoke of oxen, and he was driven all the way to Placerville, California. He arrived there in the fall of 1849, right in the middle of the gold rush. Sometime later, he was spotted on the streets of Sacramento pulling a dray, apparently by the man who had driven him across the plains, who explained to his then owner that this was a blooded Morgan horse that was too valuable to be used as a workhorse on the streets. St. Clair himself was a, a beautiful horse. He was a dark chestnut. He was so dark, he was almost black and he had the typical blocky Morgan build, perfect legs and feet, and the chiseled, kind head of a Morgan. Ultimately, he sired between 600 and 700 foals in California, and his fastest offspring went to the track, both trotters and pacers, and made their records. Harness racing was the most popular sport in America, and this was naturally because everybody drove horses. It's like people driving cars now. You might get interested in fast cars uh, because you're interested in performance. And harness racing was a craze completely all the way across America. Morgans were the fastest harness horses that existed in America 
right up until the development of the standard bred. Some of the horses, famous horses like Black Hawk and Ethan Allen, became celebrities in their own rights. Their names were known across the country. Their stories and their races were written up in newspapers. And eventually they even appeared on thousands of weather vanes that were sold all across the country. And people knew they were Black Hawk or Ethan Allen weather vanes. St. Clair also became a celebrity, a great celebrity. And when he died at the age of 21, he was so famous in Sacramento that they wrote his obituary in the Sacramento paper. And that was the only horse to be so honored.